and focus in on your breath. And remind yourself to stay here. Through minding is mindfulness. This is a point that's often misunderstood. Mindfulness is paired with alertness. Alertness is what watches, sees what's going on. But mindfulness is what keeps your task in mind, reminds you to keep staying here, staying here, staying here, don't go wandering off. And you have to use a perception to stay here. It might be a word, just breath, or in, out, or maybe a picture in the mind. There's something that acts as a label. Without that label, you wouldn't know where to focus. You'd lose your train of thought. You'd lose the thread. So those two things go together, mindfulness and perception. Perception is like a little arrow. It points you in a particular direction, whereas mindfulness is what keeps the arrow there so it doesn't suddenly disappear. Now, in the beginning of the meditation, you may not have to think about this. Just focus your attention on the breath and the mind's old habits of focusing will do that. There'll be an arrow, and then there'll be, at least for a little while, an ability to remember. But then you forget. You drop the perception. It may take you a while before you come back. So this is where you need to know exactly what the mechanics are. So that if you lose the thread, you can come back. You know exactly what to use to get back. These are your tools. It's an important element of the meditation. The Buddha has you use all of the khandhas, all of the aggregates used as tools in the practice. That's what right concentration does. It takes the khandhas and turns them into tools, turns them into a path. You've got the sense of the body sitting here, so you're going to focus on one part of it. You're going to focus on the breath part, or the breath aspect. And there are going to be feelings of pleasure and pain, where you learn how to cultivate the breath in such a way that gives rise to pleasure. Use the perception to remind yourself to stay here. And then there's fabrication, especially in the first stage of right concentration. You've got to keep directing your thought to the breath and evaluating it. What feels good right now? How is it going along? Is the mind settling down? If not, what can you do? And then there's the consciousness of all this. There you are. You've got all five aggregates working together because you want to see them together. You want to get everything in one place in a place where things are still, calm, and you can watch what's going on. You're not distracted by other things off to other levels. This is why right concentration is such an important part of the path, because it brings all the things you're going to need for insight together right here. It starts by seeing Seeing these things in terms of what's skillful, what's not cause and effect. We mentioned this morning, this morning that the Buddha said the beginning of wisdom is realizing there are some things you do that you like to do and they're pleasant and they give good results. You like to do and they give bad results. You don't like to do, they give good results, and you don't like to do and they give bad results. Those are the four kinds of things there are in the world. And wisdom lies in focusing on two of those things, the things you don't like to do but give good results, and the things you do like to do and give bad results. Teaching would look at things in terms of cause and effect. You realize the issue is not whether you like something, but what it's going to do in the long term. So in order to help you along with the path, the Buddha gives you something that eventually you're going to like to do and gives good results, in other words, the practice of concentration. Once you get used to it, once you've mastered it, mastered it it's really pleasant. Your, the mind keeps tending in that direction. You know this is a good place to be. 
And of course, there will come times when even though you know it's a good place to be, you don't want to do it. Then you know you've got a problem. That's something you want to look into. This is how you gain insight. It's not just by passively watching things coming and going and learning how. What was I reading today? Someone saying you don't want to try to change things. You just watch change. Well, as any scientist will tell you, just simply watching change is not going to give you any knowledge at all. It's when you play with the causes and see what difference it makes in the effects. That's when you get knowledge. That's when you really know what is connected to what. In terms of the meditation, you also run into this issue of the likes and dislikes. Do you like to do it? Well, sometimes, some days you know it's a good thing to do, and you know that if you really sat down and you have good results, but you don't want to do it. So you've got to look into that. You know there you've got a problem, and that's where you start playing with things, looking into that issue. and learning how to overcome whatever resistance you have. That's where real wisdom lies. It's not just in passively watching things, but it's learning how to get over your likes and dislikes, see through them, because there are some strange assumptions that lie underneath them. And when you run up against a wall like this, that's when you begin to dig down and learn interesting things about the mind. Hopefully you can come to a point where you really see through what the particular defilement was. Why were you lazy? Why were you resistant? And in the digging down, you find out that ultimately it wasn't a very good reason at all, but for some reason it had taken over, it had gotten a, it usurped a position of power in your mind. But when you learn how to get around it, that's how wisdom develops. So wisdom is an issue of cause and effect. That's why right view is expressed in terms of the Four Noble Truths. They're causes and effects. You're not just watching things arise and pass away. If you get to that stage that what's all you're doing, okay, that's because you figured out that for that particular moment in the meditation, that's going to be the most useful thing to do. You're still at doing, so simply watching, watching, watching is it's not the end of karma. It's a kind of karma. There's an intention there. There's a label in the back of the mind to remind you, just watch, just watch. So these things are all there. As a meditator, though, you want to learn how to Figure out one of the skillful times just to watch, and one of the skillful times to be more proactive. That's how wisdom develops. And it develops in the direction of getting stronger and stronger and more refined concentration. And so the insight comes not simply in learning how to get the mind to meditate or learning how the mind get the mind down into the meditation, but also learning how to gain insight while you're in concentration. As John Fung used to say, there comes a point where after you've really been thoroughly immersed, say, in the breath, there comes a point where you can lift the mind up above the breath just a little bit, not so much to break the concentration, but just enough to start observing again, asking questions again. Here you have all five of the khandhas, and they're all doing things. Remember, the khandhas, the aggregates, they're not things, they're activities. So again, the whole principle of cause and effect applies here as well. If you latch on to these things, what happens? Even on this subtle level, you begin to see there still is some stress. So what are you holding on to that's causing that stress? Because it is clinging to the aggregates. The aggregates themselves are not the Buddhist definition of stress. It's the clinging. That's what you've got to look for, because that's something you can do something about. And you begin to see the clinging itself as an activity. You just keep at these activities, keep back these activities again and again and again. That's clinging. 
Now, he's not telling you to stop concentrating, because you just have other aggregates taking their place. Can you let go of aggregates altogether? The only place you can do that is from a place of really good concentration, because it requires balance, it requires solidity in the mind, not just so that you don't just get knocked off into other aggregates. So this issue of cause and effect applies all the way through the practice. And to see cause and effect, as I said, you've got to learn how to play with the causes. Otherwise you don't know what's connected to what. And you have to make sure that your gaze is steady and continuous, because again, you may lose track of things. One cause may happen in one moment, and the effect is going to be several moments later. But if you're not continually aware, you don't see the connection. So it's both the ability to watch continually and the ability to be more proactive. Those two th qualities working together allow you to gain the insight that's going to lead to liberation. So don't get stuck in a Johnny One Note kind of meditation where you just do one thing over and over and over again. You've got to look. What's the appropriate approach to take right now? You learn that through trial and error. And you learn that by trying to develop concentration. You learn that by asking questions. bringing all these qualities of mind together, bringing all these aggregates together right here. So you can put them in shape so you really can watch them, really can learn from them, really can let them go.